How's everybody doing? Mike Albano. Um, there's my email, Twitter, what have you. I'm just going to jump right in. I work for Google. I'm on the enterprise side of the house. Um, so we handle the um, deploying and monitoring the network for Googlers. Um, so here's the agenda for the next 10 minutes. I'm just going to go into how we used to do it, um, disadvantages of that, what lessons learned, what have you, and how we do it now. And the goal is that he would agree that how we do it now is better, but we'll see. All right, so very loose dress code at Google. Uh, all you have to do is wear something, so I got away looking like this seven years ago. Um, so yes, it was build rooms, documents with standard configurations. It was entirely CLI driven. Um, we had a lot of employees that all had access to the infrastructure. Uh, to do the, both the deployment and the monitoring. We were using vendor NMSs, such as Prime AMP, to monitor the network. And um, we had a sort of host of other tooling that we used as well. Um, open source tooling, Rancid, um, Nagios, what have you. I'm sure many people in the room have experience with that stuff. Um, and it was pretty much dynamic everything. Um, no automation, we deployed a vendor. All right, so then a couple years later, um, we got rid of the documents and we started using config generators to try and come up with a little bit more predictable way of generating this configuration so that we could have, you know, the goal was obviously having the same configuration on a lot of different devices. Um, got rid of the vendor NMSs and we were starting to experiment with graphing the telemetry ourselves, the radio data, the stuff that we all need and use to monitor the network. Um, how are we doing that? The same way everybody else, SNMP, and a lot of scripts, <laughs> a lot of CLI screen scraping, having, having scripts that log in, do some show commands, stick it in, in a database, um, a lot of scripts. Um, moved on to static transit powers, we're still doing dynamic channels. Uh, the, the goal there was uh, we weren't ready to approach static channels, but we absolutely wanted to control the size of our cells since that's what we designed the network for. Um, still deployed a vendor and still relatively little automation, just some. I mean, kind of depends. Automation is a very broad term. We were using config generators, so you could say that was automation. Um, all right, so there was a lot of problems with this. Um, it was a highly distributed network, a lot of buildings, global, blah, 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 scale. Um, a lot of the problems were caused by us, the humans. There's a lot of outages caused by just having such a distributed model of all of these systems and everybody had access to it. And it wasn't, there was never any nefarious activity going on. It was just that, uh, you know, people make mistakes or, they think they're helping and, and they're hurting in other ways. So yeah, it was problematic. It was kind of the, the Wild West. Um, so what did we want to change? Um, I should say that you know, no human was fired during this transition from when we went from one doing it one way to another. Um, so this is kind of in jest. But we sort of stepped back and said, all right, like here's the lofty goals that we want to solve. What, what are all these problems of doing networking the way that we have been doing it for so long? How could we do it differently? What would we fix? What, what, what do we want to tackle now? So, all right, so one, we know we needed radio data. We know we needed telemetry uh, and we needed it fast. So SNMP wasn't working. Um, you take uh, any, a, a lot of data, like whether it's 802.11 retries, channel utilization, what have you, you aggregate that out to 15 minutes and it becomes absolutely worthless. Um, you, you mask the spikes, you can't see what's actually occurring in the network. If it was a problem for one minute and then great for 14, then you don't know what happened. Um, so we need radio data, we need it fast. Um, we needed freedom of choice, so we wanted a multi-vendor network. We wanted this, the, the ability to do what we had heard about, which was align a vendor to a use case, whether through uh, you know, some software or hardware differentiation. We wanted the ability to choose a vendor um, based on our needs, but we couldn't do that, not, not at this scale, uh, not without translation layers. So real quick, translation layers is basically taking a proprietary MIB, 
or a proprietary CLI interface, and then translating that to something um, neutral on the back end. But that's, that, those translation layers are something we had to maintain, and that was problematic. Um, we wanted APIs for everything. So we no longer wanted SNMP. We no longer wanted to be doing scripts and screen scraping and all that stuff. We wanted everything to be programmatic so we could um, automate it and be more predictable. Uh, that's the fourth one, absolute predictable configuration. Just because we think we configured something one way, we needed to know with 100% assurance that it was still configured that way. And there's many reasons for that config to drift. Um, so that, those were the goals. Uh, there are always humans. We, so we, we figured, okay, if we're going to go down this path of automating everything, um, what should we not automate? And the design was a, a sort of a, a clear one that you wouldn't automate, right? We're always going to have humans generating those heat maps, um, figuring out where the APs need to place, be placed. Dots on a floor plan, channel, transit power, typical wireless LAN design stuff, right, that, that, that we all do. Um, so what we thought we'd do is treat this heat map as the one true authoritative source for everything. Um, so the heat map is, is the only thing that humans touch. And in fact, that's how we got to here, which is basically the, the only way we deploy networks now is that we have the heat map, which a human generates, and that is it. Um, everything else is automated through APIs. So we use slides just because we needed some, we, we just needed something that we could stick a floor plan on, put some dots on it, and you know a, a label for the typical five-layer stuff. You know, channel, channel width, transit power. So we use slides because it has an API, and we could feed back into that. So we access the API, we get our AP name, we get all our five-layer stuff, um, and then when we, we do our channel planning using neighbor tables, again telemetry, RSSI neighbor tables, we we come up with a quick channel plan, and then we do puts back into that same API. To, so that the heat map gets updated with what channels we've selected, the five layer stuff that we've selected. Um, so what this means is the network gets deployed without a single human logging into anything. No logging into a CLI, no SNMP writes. It's basically a script that gets run after the things are physically mounted. Nobody, nobody logs into anything. And on the operation side, when we're monitoring it, nobody's logging in to anything. It's all um, abstracted by the uh, operations staff. And that was important for us. We couldn't retrain our NOC and our operations and our engineers for every vendor's interface. Um, so I'm going to race through this. Obviously, I'm here to talk to people. So please come up and shoot holes in my theories and ask me more questions about how I do this after. So yeah, we monitor stuff in a vendor neutral way. We've got graphs. Um, but you know, we're, we're accessing, accessing the, the APs programmatically, getting, getting the telemetry we need, populating a graph. And this is the same amongst all vendors. So we deploy multiple vendors without our NOC or our operations staff even knowing which vendor is on the ceiling. Nobody knows. Um, that's sort of the, the mantra there. Um, and that's the way we truly reach this multi-vendor environment, both deploy and operations. Unless it gets escalated, unless it's a vendor-specific software bug, they never know which vendor is getting deployed. All right, so what does this get us? Um, well, it pretty much gets us to those high-level lofty goals we wanted. Um, so the way we do that is uh, I sat on this stage like two years ago, and I was presenting on this thing called Open Config, which is you know, the, the short version of that is it's a bunch of network engineers that get together and decide what a schema should look like, what the API should look like to, a, to network elements. Uh, and two years ago, it was just a theory. Um, I was sort of saying, hey, do you guys think this is a good idea? Then I went and talked to a, a bunch of people, some of them in this room, came up with these Yang models, um, which is the modeling language we use to define these APIs. And now it's a thing, and multiple vendors are supporting it, and we use it to deploy our networks. So that's how we got the multi-vendor aspect. Um, and uh, you know, there's some data points there about you know, how much better it is now. And it's uh, obviously a lot faster to, to deploy, easier to monitor, no build rooms, no docs. Uh, we use zero vendor proprietary tools. Um, and that's, uh, that's pretty much about it. We have an app that, we, that helps us with scanning of MAC addresses for mounting. A lot of people have done that. Um, that's pretty much it. Um, yes, it is a Wi-Fi conference, so I like throwing out argumentative statements like static everything everywhere all the time is better always. Um, <laughs> we found it way more predictable and a lot easier to uh, operate the network. That's it.